Welcome inside the United Spirit Arena. What a basketball game we have for you tonight. Big 12 women's basketball, the Oklahoma Sooners and your Texas Tech Lady Raiders. Welcome to the broadcast. Vinny Vincetta alongside Crystal Bowles. Glad you are with us. Crystal, Oklahoma comes in 8-3. and three. They are not ranked in the top 25, but lend no weight to that. This is a good basketball team. As we look at some highlights from Sunday, Texas Tech blowing out Idaho State 86-52, the final score. We take a look at Kisty Greenwald. Crystal tonight, she's got a big matchup. She'll go against Leah Rush for Oklahoma. Leah can do it from inside and out. You're right, Kisty's gonna have to chase her a little bit out there to that three-point line. Another player that needs to loom large for Tech tonight is that player, Chesley Dabbs. Her matchup, Deanna Jackson for Oklahoma. Miss Jackson leading Oklahoma in 10 categories. That should be a great matchup. When you look at that Oklahoma offense, they like to play inside and out. They can play up to five out at times. Yeah. In speaking with uh, Lady Raider assistant coach Lyndon Weiss before tonight's game, he suspects Oklahoma will play about eight deep. They can play up to 11 deep, maybe even 13 deep. So depth may be a big factor in tonight's game as compared to that pre-conference benches. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by the County Line Smokehouse and Grill. The starting five for head coach Sherry Cole in Oklahoma. Three guards, Chelsea Welch from up in Plainview alongside Aaron Higgins and Deanna Jackson. She is their bread and butter. Two forwards, Laura Andrews and number 24, Leah Rush. She is their true post player, but she can shoot those three pointers as well. The starting five for those Texas Tech Lady Raiders as you watch pregame warm-ups continue. Number 31, Kisty Greenwald plays the center spot. She has a Big 12 best six double-doubles on the season. Having a fantastic offensive season is number five, Chesley Dabbs. The point guard from Arlington, Texas is Aaron Grant. She can be an assist machine when she wants to be. Inside, the 6'1 junior from Houston, Texas, number 41, LaToya Davis. And Texas Tech's leading score, 14.9 per game, number 55, Alicia Robertson. That's the matchup. We'll play college basketball right after this break. You're watching Lady Raider Basketball. Here's your host, Vinny Vincetta and Matt Miller. Well, it may be mid-March, but we've got Big 12 baseball tonight live from Dan Law Field. It's the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Texas A&M Aggies. Glad you're with us tonight on UPN Lubbock. Vinny Vinzetta alongside former Red Raider Matt Miller. You've been waiting patiently. Welcome back. Hey, thank you very much. This is exciting. Almost April means we're getting close to uh, baseball season, Big 12 opener. Got a good series here this weekend. Absolutely. When it comes to Texas A&M this weekend, Coach Hayes wants to look at this series just like any other series so far this season. We've got to play the same. The pitching matchup tonight for Texas Tech, it's Billy Carnline, 3-0 on the season, but a 6-2-6 ERA. He's been a bit erratic. He needs to have, if possible, Matt, a mistake-free night against this Aggie lineup. For Texas A&M, it's Jason Meyer. How about these numbers? 5-0, only a uh, 1.95 ERA. He's good. He's a lefty. Yeah, that's not going to cut it, huh? <laughs> no, that, that, that's unbelievable. We are just about set to get it underway. Big 12 Baseball, Texas Tech, and Texas A&M will be right back on UPN Lubbock. Welcome back. Texas Tech and Iowa State last played in the regular season January 14th, 2004 from Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa. The seniors doing everything they could to keep Tech in the game and get a big win. Natalie Ritchie doing her part. Texas Tech ranked number two in the country at the time with a 15-game win streak. Casey Jackson, a big hoop and a foul. Gia Perkins gave the Lady Raiders a 63-62 lead, eight seconds to go. But Ann O'Neill would spoil the night for the Lady Raiders. The jumper with .2 left is good. Iowa State knocking off Texas Tech. The final that night in Ames, Iowa, 64 to 63. What a game it was. We were there in Ames, Iowa, and that was a tremendous basketball game that went the way of the Iowa State Cyclones over the Texas Tech Lady Raiders. As we get set for tip-off, Texas Tech leads the overall series between these two Big 12 universities, 6-4. to four. The Lady Raiders come in 16-4, 7-2 in the Big 12. Iowa State 
They have the best record in the Big 12 Conference right now, 18 and two overall, eight and one in league play. Marsha Sharp in her 23rd season, out for win number 550 tonight in her fine illustrious career. Bill Finley, the head coach at Iowa State, 210 victories against 92 losses for the Iowa State Cyclones. Here we go with tonight's opening tip-off, brought to you by our friends at Carpet Tech. It's Katie Robinette against Kissy Greenwalt. As this one is underway, the tip controlled by Texas Tech. Here comes Aaron Grant as we're underway in Big 12 women's basketball. See a little bit of zone right there. Looks like they're all over Alicia Robertson, though. They're gonna they're gonna follow her wherever she goes. Looks like a little bit of maybe box in one zone. Under 10 now on the shot clock. Here's Kisty, a wide open look, and she connects. And you know, that's the first time Alicia, until she crossed the floor, you know, it looked a little like a 2-3, but you could tell the way they were defending her. They're just manning up the whole way. Robinette right to work against Kisty. Nice adjustment there by Katie, and she scores. She, she played a real good game last year, and Iowa State has come in and, and really helped Iowa State in that position a little bit. See right there, see where see where they're chasing Robertson through. Nobody else, they're they're yelling for cutters. You see their little box right there. That's what people talk about when they talk about the box and one. Aaron Grant will get the front roll. Latoya Davis that time drew a double team and found Aaron waiting around the free throw line. Well, and they play it like they're playing like they're playing a regular zone, which they would normally trap in a two-three. So they will trap if, if the ball's entered down on the block and should leave someone open. Aaron led the Lady Raiders in scoring in their loss to Baylor over the weekend. Here's Robinette looking for help. Squeezes it in. And O'Neill is fouled by Chesley Dass. And Garcinet tries to find a cutting Blair Hardick. It won't go out of bounds. The officials talk about it. And they say Texas Tech basketball. See right there, just able to be fronted and LaToya able to get positioning far enough up the lane to leave that opening for Kisty to find her. 40 to 22 is the Texas Tech lead. You see right there, Tech on a 22 to four run. That is going back to the first half. Where Texas Tech closed the half on a 17-4 run. The game was tied at 18. It ended up 35-22 at the half. Alicia Robertson near the charity stripe, converting 42-22. The lead now at 20 for Texas Tech. Alicia Robertson's first shot of the night that she got to go down was that three-pointer right before halftime. Now hitting her second shot. Kisty Greenwald winning the rebound battle again. Here's Alicia, count it, and the foul. And with that, we'll have a timeout on the floor, 44-22 Texas Tech. As you see the Texas Tech batting order, Fuller, Avance, Blair, Caps, Calendar, Brent Thomas, Chris Richburg, Wilson the DH, and Cooper Fouts. Cody now stares at a one and two count. Saw it off to short. Throw to first. No scoop. And Cody is on after the E6. What pretty routine play right there. Absolutely sawed him off. Inner half. That's on his hands. One hop on the turf. He's got plenty of time. Now Fuller can run. But even on one hopper on turf, you don't have to rush the throw. But in the dirt, Parrish can't scoop it. And Fuller board. 